Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Messiah and Solar Beam. It is a TVZ on ESV's Cloud Kingdom, and like always, I have fooled with my sound settings yet again. I changed from going through 100% USB to optical cable, so I had to change all the volumes, and I think it sounds a bit better now. Let me know how the volumes are, how you like them, and whatnot. It is uh, the Messiah from Team Clash, I believe. I casted him a while ago, and he had a Korean name, and people told me he was on Clash. And now I'm casting him again, and he has a Ruminized name. So I'm assuming he just used a name change and updated that. And Solar Beam, no clue who this guy is, but both these players are top of Masters over on the Korean ladder, so they will be very good. We can learn a lot from their game. As we do see the Terran player going to be throwing down a 10 supply deeper because what Terran doesn't do that anymore? I say anymore because back in the beta you could build a barracks before supply deeper which made the two racks extremely scary. So we'll see Messiah probably throw down a 15 hatch. He may go for a 16 hatch. And right away, we can look at him changing up his Overlord scouting pattern. He is not going for this one ledge. He has got to taking a delayed route to it. You see him going all the way down here, then up here, and then around. So this delays him probably by at least 30 seconds. And you don't want to go directly to this ledge because the Muslim, he has uh, started building his barracks right down here. Getting two Marines out, lifting his barracks up, killing your Overlord, and going into Hellions and then transitioning into Mech. It's very obnoxious to lose that first Overlord because not only does it supply cap you, it stops you from building drones, and then it also will uh, kill your scouting early game. We do see Messiah sending out a drone scout. Looked like that was around 13. So he is mainly just checking for any type of 2 rack play. You see him getting both of the watchtowers, and he also sees one SEV leaving the base, so he knows he's going to be scouted. And if he ends up getting into the base to do any type of uh, mineral counting, or SEV counting, I mean, then uh, he knows one is gone, but he is just going to immediately turn around. He did see one barracks and a supply depot, and that's it. I'm actually shocked that he is turning around right now, but uh, maybe that's all he needs to know, that it's not a 2 barracks play. Getting the watchtower yet again, see if anything is coming behind him, or if any sneaky play has come about. And now, will he go for the other watchtower? It looks like yes he will, just getting those watchtowers on the way back home. We do see Solar Beam building a bunker in the middle line, and just abusing all the plays where drones cannot hit. You can see Messiah, he's like, oh man! Can't kill this stupid SCV, there we go, getting another hit on, now this drone has to go off and get the hit. This one drone is on the alley, trying to chase the SCV around. Want to keep him on this side, and looks like Messiah. He is transferring his drones down here. The SCV is just hanging out. We do have one lone Marine going to be coming in. Actually, two Marines will be coming. And he is trying to get into the bunker with the drones, saying no, no, no. He is going to get us around on that Marine and not letting him very nice drone control. He is losing some minerals, but not nearly as much as if the Marine did get into this bunker. Now his buddy has joined him. He is still very weak. We do have two Lings on the way out, or already out. The speed is on the way, and we do see Messiah has pulled guys off gas right after he's mined about 100 gas. And these two Lings are going to be chasing the Marines. You do see him targeting on that one engine Marine, just so he can insta-kill that one. And now he can kill this other Marine, and this is actually very good for the Zerg play because he knows if the Terran player goes for any Hellion plays, there's not going to be that many Marines back at home because you really last on two Marines for a while for defense. As you see, he's not even producing another Marine yet. Gonna have these two Hellions. If these two Hellions leave the base, that means that Lings can go up and do a little bit of poking. Messiah really hates Terran, so he's gonna be taking out that neutral supply depot, leaving one Ling on this watchtower. Very nice play. I would love if he left one more Ling right here. And that's so when he sees the Hellions moving out, then he can send the one Ling into the base, and chances are the supply depot is down. Mas uh, Solar Beam does put it up, but if the Supply Deep is down, you do get a full scout. Additionally, you can come up here and see the Marine count. If there's no Marines back here, then you know, okay, it's probably going to be an expansion, unless he's doing something very sneaky, hiding a bunch of Marauders way off in the back. But if you don't see any Marines at that wall, chances are it is going to be an expansion. And now the uh, Spine Caller is up to uh, kill those Hellions. It looks like he built that just in the nick of time to uh, deal with those Hellions. And by that, I mean building it at 5.15, so it finishes right around 6 minutes. And there's Hellions doing some nice micro with those lanes. You did see Messiah try to sneak in, and uh, we'll see what he ended up seeing. He did end up seeing the command center from just poking up here, and uh, did not get to see the tech lab. So his command center probably should have been built a little bit back in hindsight. 
And uh, we do have Solar Beam with a lot of Hellions. And only one Spline Cola and a handful of Lings for defense. Going into this, the scan is going down. This is around the time that you would be going for that lair. You can see that Messiah is still mining that gas, so he's just went back on it. So the Terran player may not see this lair. But if he does click on the gas, he can see, okay, 200 gas hasn't been mined yet, so there's no possibility of lair. That means that most likely there's not a Banley's Nest down here just by checking on the gas that has been mined in the main. So I don't know if he actually clicked on over to that, but that is also one thing very nice to do. You scan, you don't see the lair, but you see like 23, 20 remaining. Like, okay, that lair can be going down within 15 seconds. He just got a few more drones out. So that's one thing if you do scan, always do. Click on these gases and just get an idea of how much they have mined because it can tell you things if you just pay attention. We do have the handful of Hellions going to be moving out. That is six Hellions, and he only has two Marines here. So there's two Marines he's lost at the start of the game is half his army back at home. So killing off those two Marines is really big, and now he does have Ling set up to do a counterattack, and this can do some damage, but those Hellions are on the way back. Just poked in, didn't see the third base, saying, okay, we probably can't do any harassment. Let's just go on back home because we don't have a thing called defense. All those Marines are going down, and possibly... An SCV. One SCV does go down at the cost of all these Lings. Lings going to be running up. See, the wall is up. And now he's going to go for a Hellion, but the Hellions do get nicely microed back. Doesn't look like Messiah is really focusing on those Lings, except that those were a lost cause. And went back to macroing. And that's something a lot of players do not do at the lower leagues. At the same time, he is sending this overload in. Getting a scout on is going to see a third command center. This is very nice, so he knows, okay, you're not going to do any type of two-base timing. You can be lifting this up sometime soon and going to be landing it at your third base. And probably going to go on three bases. And why is that good? Because we are at the 10 minute mark. He is going for a Spire. So at the 10 minute mark, most Terrans want to move out. But if you see that third command center, you may say, okay, he may be playing a little bit passive because he is setting up to play macro. If he didn't see this command center, that could be one of those two base timings at 10 minutes to punish Muta play. So uh, seeing that third command center means, okay, I can drone a little bit more, but at least that's what's going through his mind. Of course, he did have the watchtower, I believe he just lost it now to those Hellions moving about. But smart play would say the Terran player isn't going to be moving out, especially because he didn't have any anti-air because all the Marines have been dead. And if Mutas did come out while the forces were like right here, he would lose all his tanks and that would be game over. So that one overlord scout was definitely big. Hopefully I've uh, been clear enough on that. We do have the third base now just finishing, going into all the gas. He is mining three out of each extractor because, again, he is going for that Muta play. Additionally, he is getting ground care pace armor and getting the burrow extremely early, so he may be doing some bird bailing play, keeping a ling right at that one uh, base. Probably going to burrow that soon as he can just to prevent the command center from landing there, forcing a scan to be used. We have a reactor being built on this barracks. There's Hellion still just going about. Just uh, making sure there's no hidden bases, nothing really sneaks past them. Hellions are great for map control. We do have Messiah going back for this watchtower, going to keep holding that. And there's Hellions not doing a good job at keeping that watchtower under control. We do have one Marine thinking he can take that, but Mutas and a Ling do stop that. We'll see what these Hellions end up doing. We do have a bunch of Lings moving on out, going to be morphing in Banelings. While a few Mutas do come in, he's morphing in Banelings while he's doing Muta. And he loses one Muta, so his Muta count is going to be extremely, extremely low. Those Hellions want to go into the middle line, but immediately those drones do bow. Lings do come back. Lots of Lings going down, just getting toasted by those Hellions. Not a single Hellion goes down there. The Muta is going to try to kill a few. Doesn't look like they will begin that. We do have a handful of Banelings down here, but they can't really do anything. They are just going to be bowing about. And Muta still just harassing those Hellions. Want to get that one kill off, but Hellions... Just a little bit too quick, and now the Muta's got to be careful as those Marines there. Only taking a few hit points worth of damage. We do have Banelings bowing at this middle line, and this is very cute play. I wish that he spread this one out over here, just because the three right here is overkill. But why is it so smart? Well, he knows it's a third base, so he knows it's going to be landing. But even if the command center doesn't lift off and he decides to build one right here, you can immediately unburrow your Banelings and blow it up and waste their minerals, and that is so fun to do. If you have that on auto cast and you place them in the correct spot, they will automatically do that without any micro of you needed. You can just right click on that uh, unburrow, I think. 
and then it automatically will auto cast that. When an SCV does come in, I think you should do the uh, explosion one, two. I think you can do both of them, and that will just say, okay, I can blow up on a building. I don't know exactly. I haven't used that trick, but I have seen it. We do have two more hatches being built because we do have Muta play. And notice how he's expanding complete opposite size because the Mutas are going to give him map control. And those Banelings just waiting for that SEV transfer. And they will definitely get a lot of worker kills as we do have the conga line of SEVs going to that middle line. If he's quick, can he get them all? And yes! Oh my god, so many SEVs did just go down. Looks like at least 14 because remember the Lings did kill at least one during this run by. Muta still just going on about. Notice how low the count is, and he is going for an infestation bit. So if you see your opponent not massing Mutas, you always gotta be wondering where their gas is going. We do have um, Solar Beam knowing his opponent is on six gases. Every gas basically means a Muta per minute. So if that's not ramping up, that Muta count still staying this low, you know he's doing something. And that something most likely will be getting upgrades or getting infestors out or a hive tech or just doing something like that just getting a handful of mutas not massing them up definitely a little bit unique generally you see players either go muta mutas or infestors and this messiah looks like he is going to be going for infestors as well as he is getting pathogen glands if it was uh stefano he would not have too many mutas but he would also be getting two spires and getting all those upgrades as soon as possible so when he transitions into brood lords they are all already at 3-3 but Messiah, looks like he is just going to go for a very strong lair game with both Mutas and Infestors. That Infestor is going to be cutting back on his air upgrades. So while he is going to have all the tech, he is going to be behind in those upgrades. That is the corner he is cutting. We do have a bunch of Marines going over these Banelings and getting hit. Quite a few dead there. You can just see the casualties on my selection. Looks like 1, 4, 6, 7, 8... 12, 14. Banley's coming in and they immediately go away. This Muta's gonna come pick off a few Hellings. We do have Marines, but Scan goes down. The Marines kill the Banley's and also kill themselves. That is uh, definitely not good. So we do have Solar Beam gonna be falling back. And just look at all the Banley mines Messiah has around the map. A oh, Raven would definitely pay itself off, but. And uh, the Terran's defense, he would have to lift this up, go to a tech lab, build a raven, which cost a lot of gas, then swap it back. And the raven would be essentially cutting tanks and medevacs down, which is not something you really want to do. You need to keep that medevac count very high. And we do have, looks like a drop going to be coming off over in the corner. We do have an overlord right here hiding off in that rock. Very cute positioning there. And uh, those Mutas will be able to intercept the drop if he does end up seeing that. We do have a drop over here. Those Banelings that were not burrowed yet do see that if he had them burrowed, the Medivac wouldn't even know he was spotted. So we do have Solar Beam going to be unloading his Marines. Another Medivac going off on this side. And the Overlord will be seeing that one as well. And does he unload this? No, it looks like he is just going to be going in to find this base. He does see that Laffy Tabby there, so he knows his base. Going to unload. These Marines now can be walking their way over to this base. Bunch of Lings are over here. We do have a big Ling uh, split off, so Lings will be at both bases. This hatch taking some damage. It looks like I've kind of missed a drop there earlier this game. I missed something. I don't recall all those drones being dead and that hatch being injured. And that drop does get fungal growthed. And Fessitans do get wasted. Doesn't throw another one because he did not have another one. So a lot of energy wasted. Scans going down whenever Solar Beam moves out because he does not want to get hit with Baneling landmines again. It's already been at least three times. And those Banelings still just go back into position and puts more Banelings here. I don't think those were there. Maybe they were in the scan. So, uh, just missed them. We do have this drop for round number two. Going to be going. Those Infestitans just kill themselves. But the Muta is going to come intercept that drop. Very nicely done. Bunch of Ling's going to be running in here, but we do have a few tanks that just on siege. So this tank's going to be running back and now going to go in siege mode. A little bit odd decision. All those tanks go down as we do have uh, Messiah now going in to pressure this. And it looks like he is doing so much damage right here. Now going to be backing on off. 166 supply to 130. Great job being everywhere at once. And it looks like all the Baneling landmines are still around. We do have Marines going to be loading up in those drops. And it looks like he is going to be doing a pretty big drop. Two medevacs full of them. And going over this hotkeys, we do see Terran player just uh, with weird hotkeys. Has his dropships hotkeyed with his units. And you never, ever, ever, ever 
want to do that. Because if you ever hit one and want to go to stutter step, your medevacs will stutter step with you, and every time you hit the stop, your medevacs will stop healing. And that definitely is not good at all. You never want to have your medevacs on the same hockey as your enemy, additionally because they do kind of lead the way. We do have uh, April going to be going with another drop. Going to take out that overlord because it's fired him just so many times. And Messiah is ready, waiting for him. Another medevac is going off on the other side. It does get picked up, but it won't be getting away. Because again, we did have Messiah build just a handful of mutas. So, I'm really liking this strong layer play. Not rushing up to Hive, getting both mutas and infestors. And also, lots and lots of Baneling landmines. Every time he pushes the tan player back, he lays a few more mines just in hopes he attacks and all those mains are clumped up because that can definitely get a lot of kills. And we have Broodlords now out for Messiah. Vikings going to be coming. Those Corruptors are at 1-0. Vikings are at no upgrades. Lings and Mutas going to be running in. Tanks are unseized because of the Mutas. He is back up into his PF, so those Lings do get taken out by the Planetary Fortress. But those Broodlords not getting taken out. But at the same time, we do have the tan player going to be taking out this one hatch, and if I've learned anything from watching Holt, you can win against Broodlords by just plain base trading. And it looks like these Broodlords are going to get out, but that Baneling Landmine does take out a lot of Marines, definitely paying off, and does, uh, maybe keep this Broodlord alive, and that is exactly what is keeping Messiah in this game. We're not keeping him in it, but keeping him ahead. Those Baneling Landmines have just been devastating. We have one Marine just sitting on top of these two, scan going down, and that is not in range of this one. But I can't tell you how big that is when he kills all the Broodlords, but loses like three quarters of his Marines to Bailing Landmines. It means he can't just run straight down the middle, and this one hatch did get taken out. He is bringing his Marines over to this side. And imagine if this was like 32 Marines instead of the 16, that's what it would have been like if that Bailing Landmine hadn't have happened. And this force is going to be taken out. I think that a Terran player may be losing the game. He is definitely behind now. It is going to take some epic epic base trading skills and that's exactly what Solar Beam is doing and those Bailing Landmines just barely missed Scan going down sees that Broodlord and oh my god for the second time gets hit oh man that was just a troll he kind of glanced over the Banelings the first time then when he was running away he was all clumped up and just got devastated those Bailing Landmines are definitely the bane of Solar Beam 141 supply to 199 and those inf uh, Vikings are going to come try to take out the Broodlords, but we do have both Mutas, Infestors, and Corruptors. That is like a Vikings date of hell. And it looks like all oh, those tanks going to be taken out while they're out of position. And uh, going to be unloaded. Banelings exploding all the tanks because, well, why not? 190 supply to 120. We do have a unit down here. It looks like Medivac is gearing up to do a drop. Going over into this workers tab, we do have 52 lings and 71 drones. Going in Messiah's hotkeys, definitely hot. Looks like he uses uh, 3, 4, and 5 for his army. And just has a... Uh, we'll have to go to the beginning of the game. I don't know how the heck this guy does inject. Maybe does some weird combination of like the backspace method with clicking on your queens. It looks like his injects... Uh, probably not that good. Probably non-existent this late game. We will look at that in SE2 gears. Bunch of Marines are coming in, but uh, as long as Messiah doesn't do a major screw-up, he is going to be winning this game. I'm sorry, it's 90 supply to 200 supply. And uh, the third base is going to be falling here. Hate to call games early, but uh, I think everyone will be with me. There is no comeback from this. Ling's going to be running in here. Killing off this base. There goes the GG in the base. That's a little bit funny, but let's go this early. Let's see how he injects here, and we will be going in SE2 gears. Don't worry, but that was very interesting. So at the start of the game, looks like he may just do 1-1, one, one, inject, 2-2, two, two, inject. Not bad. Eight minutes, still no Queen's hotkey. Doesn't have both his hatches hotkeyed on a single hotkey, and that is definitely odd. So this looks like that is two hotkeys, and he leaves his main unhotkeyed. He definitely has a weird, weird play style. I can't, like, I can't fathom him having good injects with this. This is, if you're a Zerg player, you know how hard this must be to inject. 
Getting two more hatches. Does he hotkey those? Okay, so looks like he has all his hotkeys. Well, all his hatches, not except his main, go on two. And then his main hatches, the hatches in his main, go on one. Maybe that's for, like, unit reinforcement, because this is so far away. He wants to build units out of these hatches first. Really no idea. I cannot explain his, uh, injecting. But we will go on SC2 gears. That queen is relatively low. Going to his queen energy, that's pretty high. So, uh, yeah, I don't expect to see that good of injects. It's definitely looking like he did come from Boudoua. Whoops, that is very old. Okay, so... Let's go to Injex, because that is what I really, really want to see. Main building control, 10 minutes. So, 10 minutes, 6.8. Not bad. But, uh, he's only managing two hatches. And then you can see, once he starts getting more hatches, it's not... It's not horrible. Not horrible by any means. 38, finishing the game off. All this time not injecting. 22 there. He has master Injex. This is... I don't see him being like a top tier player with that hockey setup, but who knows? Maybe it works for him. Maybe he's very fast with his mouse. Uh, maybe I'm missing something, but uh, yeah, it's just awkward for that hockey setup. I've never seen someone inject like that in my life, but he is very good. That play definitely shows how good he is. Going to the APM, we have... Uh, Messiah, 58 macro, 147 micro. Solar Beam, 77 macro, 133 micro. Redundancy for 33% for Messiah, 142% for Solar Beam, 135 versus 120. Messiah just a hair bit faster, according to EAPM. Now, uh, let's see. Unit tiers, that's not what I want. Builds tech and strat. Let's look at this one. Good ability groups. Unboo, one. Let's see, how was he doing that? Oh, wait, we're halfway through the game. Five manly detonates. So, looks like he did bailing landmines five times. And if you have, like, six bailings hotkeyed, have them all in one control group, explode one, it only counts as one here. So he manly detonated ba bailings five different times. 19 brood loader morphs. There's five infested you saw. Weren't effective. Two good aspire morphs. Pretty cool play. I really, really did enjoy that. Lots of burrowing. For the tan player, 13 scans, 3 PF morphs, 28 mules. Not too interesting. Going in the units. 137 drones versus the 75 SCVs. Holy cow, April! You did not build SCVs, sir. 194 lings, 244 marines. You get the picture. Going into this resources, this is going to be definitely in uh, Zerg's favor because that moon count was so low. Keep in mind how early he lost those 15 SCVs when he was on three bases. Resources spent. Messiah spending about 2.5 times more gas and 25% uh, more minerals it looks like. Not bad. Uh, that, I think that'll be it. I don't know if there's anything I want to look at anymore. So I hope you enjoyed the cast. Sorry if the sound is atrocious. Uh, atroc I'm not even going to attempt saying that word again. But, uh, doing my best to upgrade my sound. And, and uh, eventually one day the sound will be amazing. So, uh, take care, guys, and I will see you tomorrow.